very first dog, we went on our very first mission, and it was for the vice president. We were doing sweeps around Air Force Two, and we just got done, and we just rolled out the red carpet, and my dog decides to go to the bathroom, and takes just the biggest, gnarliest, you know what, ride on the red carpet in front of Air Force Two as a vice president starting to pull up. And I'm sitting there looking at this dog, and he's just looking at me in the eyes like, yep, you know what it is, just so embarrassing. I've been a handler for about six years now. So a handler is actually hands-on with the MWD. We do anything from regular day-to-day -day patrol to deploying downrange. And also helping out not only local, but federal law enforcement with anything that uh, requires or what they ask for us for extra assistance. Everybody here, we're not just nine to five. You actually have to come in on your off days. You have to put in extra work. So it takes a lot to be a canine handler or a trainer. Currently, I'm a trainer at the 802nd. Oh. Oh. Basically, our job entails managing and ensuring the validation and certification of military working dog teams that we have here. Oh. Spinning up new teams, basically managing the records too. The biggest challenge is simply communication. The dog to, you can't just say sit, and the dog's like, oh, I know what that means. <laughs> you have to somehow find and show the dog, this is what I want you to do, and the dog has to truly understand it. So you'll always have your patients tested because they're kind of like little kids. They'll constantly be testing you, pushing your buttons, see what they can get away with. And if you don't have the patience or communication skills to be able to show that dog or teach that dog what to do, you probably aren't going to cut for this type of job. When you get to the field, it's a big learning curve and actually trying to handle a dog. It's easy to watch someone do things and be like, oh, well, that's wrong. Uh, that was good. But then when you're actually handling the dog, it's completely different. It's like trying to speak a different language. People don't know just how rigorous and physically demanding this job is. It definitely takes a lot of you, a lot out of you mentally, physically, emotionally. Basically comes down to it affects everything in your life. And so you have to have some solid time management skills because you are going all the time. We're going, traveling all around the United States for missions. We're going overseas for deployments. Our organization is the heartbeat of the Military Working Dog Program for the Department of Defense because we are the sole source for all military working dogs, trainers, handlers, and kennel masters. So the Expo is really important to us because what we want to do is we want to show what we do every single day and how we impact national defense. You won't find a more passionate or driven group of people. I will tell you with certainty that they love what they do. So our adoptions program, what we do is we take retired military working dogs and our main goal is to get them into a home with a suitable adopter that best suits their lifestyle. The wait list can vary, it can be from 12 to 24 months and we don't do it first come first serve, we just want to make sure that the dog is the right fit for the home and that's our priority. So we want to find the most suitable adopter for that dog. This adoptions program is very important because these dogs have served in our military. Every base is different, but for us here at the 802nd, we actually have what we call canine hopefuls. They actually have to go through each individual task with a handler, trainer, and get each individual task signed off. Then we test them with different job knowledge, and from there, our kennel master will then get the final say, because ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not just us, it's about the dogs. We need to have passion with what we do. And you forget the caliber of these dogs that we get. They're not ordinary. When you actually feel the dog and the presence, it's very surreal, but also very nerve wracking at the same time, because you're like, oh shoot, this is a lean, mean fighting machine. The best part is simply just having the dog by your side every day. I get to literally come to work and play with the dog all day. 
and that's what I call work. So it's pretty awesome.